Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is Sith Council. I'm excited to have you back. It's Wednesday. It's the Andor uh, episode seven. Wow. Spoiler discussion with myself. Steph Sabra on location and <laughs> the Top Gun guy. <laughs> no, not the Top Gun guy, but Mike Kalinowski is going to be on the show. It's the three of us. Mike's actually in studio for once, and Steph is going to be the one not in studio, but that's okay. We're happy to have you guys with us. Thank you so much. We'll also be talking. I'm going to give a just my initial thoughts. I can't give a full review yet on um, Tales of the Jedi, some other things in the Star Wars world. But for the most part, it's really going to be Andor. There's some news that the show is doing not as good as the other ones. And it doesn't surprise me. It, it bums me out, but it doesn't surprise me. And we'll talk about that a little bit as well. And... If you haven't already, please join us on Patreon. We have a lot. I've been having these one-on-one set, one -on -one sessions with you guys, which has been great. I have there's a few of them that are available per month, but it's about a half an hour. I just sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one and talk to people. It's pretty great. There's limited spots, but we also have watch-alongs. We have exclusive schmoes content that we haven't had up for a while. All that stuff. And if you didn't know this already, merch. That's right, Sith Council, baby. Sith Council has their own shirt. We've got. <laughs> the Top Gun guy? That is our own. That We finally have a logo. And we have it. It's thank you to Nozette Milian, who came up with this design of the Top Gun guy. That one, you got it. And as you see in the iCard right there, you have to get that one as soon as possible. I'm just making it live today. And I don't know how long it's going to say. Sometimes they, they knock stuff off with, uh, I, I think because it's parody, we'll be all right. But it's possible there will be very limited design. Uh, a few other designs that are up there. Show some class. That one's going pretty good. So why don't you show a little? Get that. Um, capes and cows. That'll be up as well. The big thing, obviously. And the one that Mike Kalinowski will be wearing on Christmas. Farts are my brand. That will be coming out very soon and probably up today. So, all right. That being said, let's get into it. It is Sith Council. I'm ready to go. Are you guys ready to go? I know you say farts are your brand, but the question is, are you ready to get into the Sith Council? I am. Let's do it. It's the Sith Council. It's myself. It's Mike Kalinowski. It is Steph Sabra, everybody. Let's do it. Boom. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus. Makes you stronger. The Top Gun guy? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Top Gun right. guy? Easy, Mike. Your Easy. laugh. Jesus. All right, here we go. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, hey, that is that Kevin Smith's belt behind you? All right, everybody. It's I nice oh my gosh. to see you, and you hear that laugh, or you hear that in the background. Ladies and gentlemen, she is my favorite person on Sith Council besides me. Not him. <laughs> That's me. That's right. Z, look at Steph's that. Abroad. Yes! Hello oh. from afar. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Good. Um, better. I miss you guys, though. Same. Wish I was well, in the sandwich. You will be a little under the weather. Yeah, a little under the weather, but returning to full form. I'm hoping by the end of today. Oh, good. Well, we're happy to have you, regardless. And we were even Mike. We're even. Let, she's even there with us. Look, look at, that. at that. Look at that. I can look up, and I'm like, hello. Yeah, she's right there. You're, Steph, as you should be, you're looking down at us. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, let's get. <laughs> Let's get right into this. Let's show some class. You look at this Just table. It's a little. mess. And who did that? You got well. You got some snacks. I'm a five year old. I need snacks with me. I'm going to talk about this first report that lead into the episode Let's seven review. All right. They're talking about how the reviews or not the reviews, the ratings are not as big as you know Obi Wan and these other shows, and and I started getting questions about it from people who watch this show and where they were asking. They're saying. Well, do you think that this means that Lucasfilm is going to be hesitant now to do shows like this? And I said, I hope not, because Star Wars needs smart Star Wars. And this is what this show is. This show is smart Star Wars. Yeah. And to, and I've seen a couple things that I talked about this on my spoiler review, which I hope I've made live, and I don't even think I've made it live. You probably didn't, but that's all right. I think you're absolutely right. I do not think I made it live. I didn't, and now I did. Oh, my God. Look at that. I can't what would you do without it. me? I don't know, but Mike... What yes. do you think about the ratings of this show? And um, you know, yeah, I saw that the other day, maybe last night. Um, you'd, I could say I don't give a crap. I think it's the best written Star Wars we've gotten in I don't know how long. Right. But I know I don't run the numbers. I'm not the numbers guy. Going, we're not getting the views on this thing, so we ain't gonna do another one of these type shows. Right. I don't. You know, you can argue quality versus quantity doesn't matter anything. You could have the highest numbers watch something, but. You know, 
this is a, a infinitely better show than. And again, I will probably rewatch Mando. I'll drop one episode in whatever to watch it always for as long as that's up on Disney Plus. Right. I don't know if I'm ever gonna go back and watch Obi Wan, and Andor. I will probably watch as a viewing. I'm not gonna drop into an episode. And just watch one episode like this. I, I, it's a character drama. It's a character drama. It, it is, and it's so it's just so layered, Steph. Um, so before we get into the, the details of the episode itself, what do you think about this? You know, when it comes to the fact that less people are watching now. Before you answer it, do you think that this would have been the problem, even if it wasn't as detailed and layered as it is? We always thought that Andor was the one that wasn't going to have a lot of the hype behind it. So, do you think that with casual viewers, that's really where it's taken the biggest hit? Yeah, definitely. I think I think about my brother and people who like Star Wars and love Star Wars even, but they're not keeping full track of it and don't need to watch everything. I, this is a show he would be obsessed with, and I had to convince him to start it because he was like, why would I start it? I know what's going to happen in Rogue One. So I think that that's like been the problem since yeah. the beginning, which is unfortunate. But do we know what the numbers are doing in comparison to other shows out right now? Or is it just not as performing as high as Obi-Wan, or is it not performing well? I'm not sure um, the, the full. Do you? Um, they mentioned Mando and Obi-Wan. They didn't say Boba Fett okay. in those articles. But... You know, it's so funny. Like, we know what happened to Obi-Wan. So, yeah. why, why were the views so high? Like, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's because, I know. It's because he's been, because Obi-Wan's Obi-Wan. Of course, Obi -Wan of course. And Andor's of course. Andor. But yeah. this goes back to that topic we talked about where I had, had my friend who's an executive and is involved with those type of meetings, not with Lucasfilm, but he knows he's like, Disney is terrified to make a show without a Skywalker or a lightsaber. Right. And this is 100% proving that right because a lot of people are tuning in saying it's not Star Wars because there's no. Which is the silliest argument I have I'm ever not, seen. He, this, How people say this to is me, not Star Wars. You don't get more Star Wars in this episode. They it's crazy. They mentioned Palpatine three different times. They talk about the politics, the way that the Empire is taking over. I know. It's not set up Jedi Sith Star Wars because right. at this point, the Jedi are not around. Remember that? Yeah. They're not around at this point. So I, I, I've i seen that. I've seen a handful of people say that this doesn't feel like Star Wars. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I, it's the most Star Wars I've seen in a But I think time. those people are under the impression, not in the impression, they are of the guys, and that's who the execs look at. Like, it's got to have the themes. It's got to have, you know, the, I, people have got to say, the way the Force be with you. That's Star Wars. It's, it's ingrained in the DNA of it. And I just, I've disagreed with that. For, we've, I've said that forever. I right. love this show for those reasons that it doesn't do that. Absolutely. I don't know. Um, but I don't have numbers. I don't know. I mean, Obi-Wan was never, it was always going to be the biggest thing. It, it, it's you McGregor, Hayden Christensen's return to the role. Like, it was, big, of course, it was huge. You weren't, you weren't going to top that show. There's no. No, there's no doubt. I'm just hoping that what they do see, Lucasfilm, is that they see what people are saying about this show and how people are really responding to it. Because jumping into the actual episode itself, this stuff with Mon Mothma was next level. I mean, it was just. Oh next my level. god, Steph, are you with me? Like that scene that she had with her old like college buddy or whatever, too. Like that was like next level writing. That was like better than any spy movie I've seen. I've ever seen. I'm oh, so serious. Now. I was. I, I I know I'm not as invested in that as Mike, so I can say that. <laughs> but I was like, what a baddie she is, and the writing on that was when she kept just being like, just smile and knew exactly what she was doing. Yeah. And how like uh, how tense it was because you can't trust anyone, but this is the one person that she thought she could trust. Right. And like all the people that were in her room, and I love how her and the ISB character Mara, I think it is, they both are unsuspecting because I think part of it is that they're women. Part of it is that they, uh, for Mon Mothma, it's very deliberate. She wants you to believe this facade of hers, but she has this completely different thing going. And I love that that followed the scene with her in Skarsgård because I wasn't exactly sure where she was going to go, but it seemed like it just fired her up. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that was, and even the the start with like with her and Lucian again, right? And he and he's saying, yeah. he's he, she's like, did you do this? And he's like, come on, you know that I did, right? And he's like, and you need to understand that that's what this is now. This isn't when yeah. I told you it's not. I what did I tell you? What were my words? Yeah. That I'm gonna I'm gonna get us into this, and there's no turning back. So you're in, you're out. Yeah. Right? And and she, I like flipped the switch in her, and she's going, okay, because that stuff that she does with the just smile, that's stuff like Lucian was doing. That's right. the stuff that she's been doing at the shop, and then the fact that she with with the line she says is like, 
what I've learned from Palpatine is show them show them the stone when when you have the knife to the throat or whatever. It was. <gasps> like, yes, like, what a great so line! Good. Like, and that that was the second time that not only was he mentioned, you also notice Ularin shows up in this episode too. Later, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I, I don't get the art. I mean. Like, the, the level of duplicity that's going on. And again, I didn't know what was happening. I mean, for a little while, I was like, the greatest thing about spy thrillers and, and stuff is that you never know who to trust. Like, Lucian in that scene, I'm like, right. he's one of us, the good guys, right? He's a rebel. What's good? Wait, what? Right. They're not on the same page, the two of these she, guys? And, she wants to kill, and he wants to kill Andor. Oh, yeah. That was, that was another thing. That was the, that, thank you for bringing that up. It was like, wait a minute, what? The, the whole, he's the guy that's inspiring him to be a rebel. You gotta, and you, you want to kill him? You got to cut up loose ends yeah man it's 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 classic classic stuff but it, i'm like it really the is tension. Just some of this stuff i mean like this the scene when they're when and like and you got a lot of backstory too and, and this was kind of and maybe i just picked this up in this episode and correct me if i'm wrong and if they oh i'll do that don't worry please but they mention how obviously something happened in that town square where the, someone that they loved was killed right now the guy that was killed his name was clem the guy that he took his identity of. Right. Yeah. Now, that was the first time that that was... that Because when, when they came up with the Clem thing, I, did you know that that was already a thing? No. Okay. I was just like, so he just... Was, I, uh, who, you need a name. Uh, Bob. Right. But that's what I thought it was. But Steph, yeah. did you but, pick that up? I'm pulling yeah. up the episode. Hold on here. I picked it up when he said Clem. I didn't know his name. I don't think he ever identified his name. He was... But he was with his mom, right? When they found yeah, him when they on... found him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah on that... on. What was the original planet? Not Ferex, but yeah, where yeah. they find him on the original planet. So that makes sense why he didn't have his father figure around, which was a really, really depressing and like serious. Now I kind of loved how they cut away. I didn't need to see that one. I think they've right. done a good job of like pulling the punches and showing the punches, depending on what the scene is calling for. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. And I think that that, and there was so much depth with it. And the idea where he's, t he's sitting there and he's talking to his, um, what's the Harry Potter actress's name? Fiona Shaw. The great, the great Fiona Shaw. So Fiona, Marva. Yes. Yeah, so she, so Marva, when he's having that whole conversation with her and she's like, what the, everyone is like, what the hell are you doing back here? You had it, you made it yeah. out. Why are you back? And he's like, cause I'm taking you with me. And then Piss Pot's like, can I talk? And they're like, and they're like <laughs> I no. love Piss Pot. Piss Pot's the best. And I like his little dog bed charging station. Yeah. He's like, he's like, <laughs> I'd like to say something I'm like, no, oh, like, say oh. something. and he gets so sad. But, um, but then she doesn't go with them. And then you ring back Bix and I, yeah. you were wrong. What's up? They had a relationship. You're right. I was wrong. I hey, I'm right. Hey, I'm a big man. I can admit when I'm wrong. I know. I was wrong. wrong. Um, so I was, uh, but, but they, they go back into that. They have that conversation. What I loved and one of my favorite parts in the entire episode was the, and it, and it signifies the writing of the show. When he comes back and he's talking to, to her, Fiona Shaw, and he says, Oh, I know what you're going to say. But he, and he goes, well, you know, who ratted me out? Oh. And she goes, it was Tim. And you, you didn't know this? And he's like, oh, she's like, yeah, don't get upset. He's dead. Yeah. And I'm like, what great writing. Like, that's the first thing you would ask if you didn't know. Like, how else would he know? No one knows. And because like, the question is, like, does he just know? Yeah, it's a writing point. He found out somewhere down the line. No, yeah. they show you where he finds out. And then he's got to go talk to her. She's still messed up by it. Right. Like, and then he, and she says, everybody blames you. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. And he's like, I got nothing here. And he's walking through. He hears the stormtroopers. You take us back to that moment. This is just, and th th we haven't even gotten into the Empire stuff, which is some of the, the best stuff of the whole entire episode. <laughs> but like this is, this episode was just chef's kiss, chef's kiss writing to, to the nth degree. That, that line of uh, Andor to Marvel is like, I'm always going to think about you. Or, or I won't be able to stop thinking about something. Right. And she's like, oh, that's what love is. Like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my uh, gosh. That made me cry. That scene that's actually made me cry. She's but had she's a few like, lines that give me the chills. And yeah. when she was talking about how, like, they can't get in here, like, she's free in her mind and that's all that matters. I love the way that they make every single planet kind of representing a different part of how oppression yeah. and regimes can take over. And it's like the people who are fighting for freedom or like just get caught in it, get blamed or like targeted as extremists. And then the empire or like whoever the fascist regime is like starts clamping down and then you hate the people that were involved. It's really just like, it's so good. It keeps getting better. I'm, I can't believe it. It's really good. And I love that we opened up though with the fact, I didn't even realize how funny that is. Like, you know, the, the dude who was eating cereal the whole time, his name is Cyril. <laughs> and I know you can call him Cyril. No way. Yeah, his, name is, his, his name is Cyril. Or Cyril. Cause, he, cause his, his, his mother's busting his balls again in the beginning. He's, he's like, it's a brown suit. She's like, 
Yeah, yeah what's, what's call- wrong with it? What do you? What is your collar right. sitting? What's your collar sitting? Like the whole thing, and then then when he goes and he starts having that conversation, the guy's like, "Well, let's just clear up your record, and nobody can see that." Yeah, that's all right. Like you know, because he's he's going full Dexter mode as we as we see we we enter yeah. the end of this um this episode, and he's like still searching. He wants revenge on Andor yeah. one way or another, and he's going through it. So we know that he's starting to really. Amp down, and Mike. Mike and I were texting, and I had heard Tony Gilroy say this, and Mike reminded me also. Oh, yeah. He's like, "This episode was kind of. It was obviously it had a lot to do with the rest of the angles that we've seen thus far, but it was like its own standalone episode where it wasn't arcing anything. It had a beginning, middle, and end. And it wasn't. And it wasn't a uh, a filler episode. No, but it, not at but, all. But it also wasn't a. I don't want to say a loose ends tie up of oh, remember those characters? Let's go revisit them. Right. Everything was still moving forward. It wasn't yes. like we were going back right. and like, this is what happened when we were on this cool adventure. He didn't go on another adventure on that planet. No. He just went to clean up everything. And yeah. then it was like, and just to realize there was nothing there for him anymore. Yeah. And I think that that was necessary for him, for, for his continuation. Yeah. Because Steph, like, that's why when we go to the, um, and then we move on to, well, I, again, I actually, let's talk about that Andor, the, the Mon Mothma scene. Yeah. Where... She has now really got into becoming the Mon Mothma that we know from Return of the Jedi, Rogue One. And she's starting to really make these moves, and she's starting to plan on the attack. And then you have this guy who looks like Terrence Stamp, but it's not. Um, and he's and that whole scene where he's like, yeah, you wouldn't like my politics, basically saying, like, I want these guys to the ground. It's like, well, you might find that. That was like, because you don't know as you're watching it, like, okay, is he for the Empire? Or right. is he against the Empire? And she's like, like, no, she's like, and my, you see she's him, like I trust in my gut. But you see him going, I don't know how much I can tell her. Right. So it's, I'm going to shut my out. mouth and just say, you're not going to like what I like. Yeah, and all that but stuff, like the stuff with um, her daughter, her husband, even saying, don't say anything to my husband. He can't be trusted. Yeah. It's like it, set, it sets up everything. And it went, on, it went on long enough for us to really be on the edge of our seat watching that. Yeah, it was like such good tension, and I like didn't know how it was going to go. I also was like, "Is anyone going to hear this?" Like, they're still in public, even though they were talking quiet and kind of in code. And I like that she still didn't say exactly what she was doing, right. but she basically alluded to it. But I think he made it pretty clear from like you know anyone who is even mildly against the empire would walk into her house or the plant that that planet and be like this is like opulence to another level right. and like people are starving here the, like it's so gross to me like you could tell he was uncomfortable being there yeah. so i kind of trusted him initially but then again it's like you really don't know but mon mothma's told three people you know the plan yeah who was so the three for so her who, to who, pick- who were the three it was lucian her and is it it's not fiona shaw is it because she knew about i it. think she it's knew- the assistant right his oh, assistant right 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 Mm. Um, which I forget yes. her name. You're right. You're She's right. pretty cool too. Right. It and is, ruthless. Absolutely. Yes. It was. It was. It's those three because Fiona Show just knows about it through the reports because even because that and that that was a great tie into both. Right. You have you've got um, Fiona Shaw who says, you know, this is it, this is a rebellion. You heard what happened, and and Andrew goes, that was just a robbery. But then you the juxtaposition that to the Empire goes, this wasn't just a robbery. This was a statement. This was an announcement. Yeah. And, like, that was a great, like, this is an announcement. It's like, yes, it was an announcement. And I said, this, and, and my review, I said, this is the beginning of a championship team, is what this is. Yeah. But I love that part with uh, with Fiona Shaw's character because she doesn't even know what he just came back from doing. Like, right. she might suspect in the back of her mind. But it is this cool way why this episode isn't just a filler and it's why it's not just tying loose ends. It's like... He has to lose everything to become the Andor that we know. And they have to lose everything to become the characters that they are. Every character has to lose everything to start becoming what we need them to be for the rebellion. So I love that scene that she's starting to put in his brain, like, this is bigger than what you think it is. Exactly. And I think that when you have um, that whole thing with the Empire, when the, the head of the table... Yeah. And he's up there and he's having that conversation. And this time the guy tries to do the same thing that happened last time. He's like, oh, you know what? Here's what she's doing. She's going around your back and doing this and this. And he's like, all right, you got a, you got a case? And she's like, yeah, here's my case. The reason why we're doing it is this, this, and this. And he's like, okay, well, now you're going to take over. And that putz is going to do something else. Do you want him to besiege your reputation in public, please? And yeah. she's like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. And he's just like, okay. I love how she just stood her ground. Like the second. I love that she's old like, guy. Wait, wait, the old guy's great. But when she was like, she, she, put her, she put her fists up like, all right. 
Like, let's scrap. Because at first she's like, all right, he's calling me out. And you're like, oh, no, is she going yeah. to be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but she, she doesn't. She puts her fists up, and she's like, let's go. Yeah. And, she, and he's like, watch your back yeah. at the end. And it's like. That was great. This is what I wanted from this show. I wanted to see both sides. I wanted to see the Empire. Like, because you're going to, you kind of, even though you know she's coming after the Rebellion, they're making you feel for her. They're making you go on her side because you're like, you want to see her fight through all this stuff, but she's fighting to squash the Rebellion. But she's a, a terrible person. She's a terrible person. She's going to be right. one of the most awful people on the show. Yeah, absolutely she is. And I think that's what I love about this yeah. in general. But then, then you get to really what this whole show was all about, where... Cassian thinks that he's just going to run away from the Empire and he's going to be fine. And that's the last thing that happens. Can I just say? Yeah. You think it was K2SO right away? Oh, well, yeah, of course. Oh, but, my God, yes. But, no, but a- pre to this, I love that planet. Oh, the one that it's they like go to? Miami, it's like Miami, South Beach. Beach. Yeah. Like, you got the old people sunning themselves. Like, yep. the fact that, like, Star Wars always kind of seems to have... We're on some kind of foresty yeah, planet or some yeah. kind of desert planet. Like, this to me, this is what I wanted Canto Bite to be. Yes. Remember that? Like, yes, yes. This is like, yeah, they got palm trees. There's a little bit of a People beach. Bathing, aliens are bathing out. Yeah, the they're sun. bathing out there. But I love that he's walking You get there. ruffians just running everywhere. But again, that dialogue. He's walking through and he's seeing in these teasers people running through. Yeah. And then the stormtrooper's like, why are you sweating? He's like, it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what do you mean? He's like, and he's like, well, you're part of this, and it shows you what the empire yeah. is. And it shows you. It reminded me of like the Nazi Germany stuff. That gaslighting. Like, like you're like I don't care. I think that you're suspicious, so you're suspicious. Yeah. And and then he because he, he's legit not doing anything. No. Nope. And then there's like it reminded me of the Dark Knight Rises, that kind of yeah. kangaroo court at the end there yes. with um, with Scarecrow, yeah. and it's just like and and if you've ever seen the Transformers movie from like 1986, 1987, whatever it was, um, 86. It, yeah, it was 86. No, no, no. Actually, Definitely no, it was 86. It was 86. I but don't put me on the spot. Here. But um, it's that guilty or innocent, and he goes innocent, and then they they put up they throw him to the sharks because he's innocent. And it was that uh, this this would have been a six month sentence, but uh, six years, and you're like, whoa, he's getting thrown. Over. So Steph, what do you think then happens now? He goes through, he's going to prison. Is this now they find that Lucian now finds him and they, they give him like a permanent seat now? Yeah, I think it's either going to be Mon Mothma or uh, what's her name? The, uh, the the leader of the kind of rebel crew that was the blonde. Oh, the, that, um, that, that sent out to kill him. That sent out to kill him. Val? She might change Val? her mind. Yeah, 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 and like want to make him a part of the team. I like obviously like he's not going to die, so I'm not sure how he's going to get out of that. But I loved this scene. Like as soon as we, I saw the beach and like the music completely shifts. Yeah, it just shows how in touch Tony Gilroy is with the world because it is. It just displayed so many accuracies of what we see in the world. Like if a government wants to be fearful of the people and think everyone's bad, they're going to throw every. They're going to lock everyone up. And like the mandatory minimum type of like conversation is just like hits so real to what it is a lot of times uh, in the even in the states. So I love that. But I think, yeah, he's probably going to get escaped from jail. I for a second, I was like, would K2SO like be like the one? Right. But I know he's not going to come this. Yeah, not this yet, early. but it was a good tease for that. We'll get into it in a second. Yeah. What we did see is how he gets there. He's with his lady, his new lady in the beginning. Yeah. And it looks like he just used joy mode, and I'll tell you that. So joy mode <laughs> is something, if you haven't used joy mode, uh, you might want to try joy mode. What is it? Well, it is a sexual performance booster. That's right. Sexual performance booster. It's like you go to the gym, and you have a pre-workout supplement. Well, joy mode is a pre-sex workout and supplement. It's great. It's really, And it's like, well, I don't have that problem. That's not what this is about. It has nothing to do with the problem. It's like, let's go. And that's what it is. You sometimes you're around the gas station. You at the gas station. You look over. Like, oh, I'm going to try those things. Terrible for you. Some of the ones that they're over the counter are terrible for you. Not joy mode. Joy mode is all natural. You're feeling good. You use it. You're done. So you go to usejoymode.com/slash/big-thing. Usejoymode.com/slash/big-thing. Get thirty percent off. And tell me about it. Well, I don't want to know about the actual what happened, <laughs> but tell me about it if you enjoyed it. Because you tell me, I tell the sponsors. And that's how we get more stuff here, and that's how we can continue to support the show. So thank you to Joymo. And let's, uh, let's move on over. we we'll go back to this K2SO, although not K2SO, scene. And here's this droid. And everybody, obviously, they're teasing you with this. that They want you to think that it's K2SO. And he comes in, you hear the second you hear his voice, you're like, that's not him, unless they yeah. reprogram or something, but that's not him. And then he, then he grabs him by the throat. 
at one point. That was it. There it is. He grabs him by the throat, and he's choking the life out of him. He's just like, hang. And it's just like, finally, the guy, I guess, felt some pity on him and let him go. But, I mean, both of you guys, were you just like, that? what an ending it, to that episode, Mike. It's like, I, I mean, when anyone ever says political in Star Wars, and it was never political, it was always political. Always. And it's just, more. you're older now. It's relevant to the times. In the yep. 70s, we were kids, and we didn't think about the politics and stuff. And now we're adults, and we see exactly what's happening and exactly where you're gaslit. I mean, I don't say that as me. Yeah. Well, this is Star I've Wars for adults. Had to, you know. This is Star Wars for adults. This, of course. This, this really is. And but that, that is what's going on in this it, world right now. It is. But in general, and maybe that's one of the reasons that people want to try to escape a little bit more. And maybe. I don't know, maybe. But, 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 Steph, what do you think? about this end scene the, with the with the droid and how Cassian's trying to run away from it, but he just can't avoid it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I was like, thought there was going to be like 10 more minutes of the episode, <laughs> yeah. and then it just ended, and I was like, what? Uh, I, I think it makes sense with the way that he's telling this continuous story. You know, not a lot of days are passing in between the moments that we're seeing. So it keeps you, I think, on the edge of your seat, which is like the entire episode, you're on the edge of your seat, so you're continued there. I think it's smart because it's been the one Star Wars show since the Mandalorian where I'm like, I can't wait to see what happens. And I know what the end goal is, which is crazy, but I still can't wait to see what happens next week. Yeah, see, next next week to me is where, as, as Mike and I were talking about it, you've got the... As I've been saying, episode one was a jab. Episode two was a hook. Episode three was an uppercut. Four was a jab. Five was a hook. Six was an uppercut. Yeah. Seven was like a combination. Yeah. With a, with a finish, and then now we get back into. I think it's a two episode arc, is what Gilroy well, said. Well, from what I remember, he was like yeah. eight, eight, nine, and ten are a three episode, and then eleven, twelve are the finale. I don't think so. I think I think they said. Well, I'm telling what Gilroy said. So if I you're telling him he's wrong I about his own show, I think, I think we should quote you on that. I think I read it the other day. You've been wrong about a lot of things. You've been so. wrong a lot about a lot of stuff. Okay. Like how many movies were they announced at D23 in celebration? That's right. You still owe me a steak dinner, by no, the way. That was null and void. It, we, I think. Really wait. Wasn't. So what are each of you saying? I think I read that the next so, uh, don't, three don't are. Say, don't don't say anything yet. So let's say. So, okay. so yeah. the, well, here we go. We'll do some research on it. I'm not making a bet because you don't pay off your bets. You're, no, you're, you make a bet. You're, you're a scumbag. You're, um, you're, you're a, a scoundrel and a liar. All right, so here we go, you louse. Um, from what <laughs> I heard was that episode seven was a standalone kind of its own adventure. Eight and nine were like its were its own, and I think uh, either either but ten was a, either ten no, either ten was a standalone, uh-huh. and eleven and twelve were the finish, or it was ten and eleven and then a finish. If I had a gavel, I'd, I'd be banging it right now. Going, you're out of order. Okay. It's well, seven was a standalone. Eight, nine, and Show ten. Me the facts. Eight, nine, and ten were three. Me the facts. Arc- Where's your facts? You love doing research in the middle of the show, so do your research in the middle I of the show. I don't need to do my research in the middle of the show. Seven is a standalone. Can Eight, you, nine, and ten were a, a jab, move, a hook, and an uppercut. Can you move Kevin Smith's belt over, please? Eleven and twelve. <laughs> you need, where do you need me to move it? Right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> is that where I need to move it to? How's that feel? That is, that is theft. That is theft oh right now. Oh, my gosh. That is pure theft. My shoulders finally got evened out because I was carrying this on my right oh my side gosh. for so long. Oh I finally God. didn't have to carry it for so long, so my shoulder, my back is in much better shape now. have to have that now. debate on this, on the big thing eventually. Um, but anyway, I don't know why I keep losing Steph. I keep, there she is. Um, anyway, I think uh, I think where we go from here, I mean, I, the, the adventure's got to go. The adventure's got to s- continue on, and they got he, they got to make them full part of of the rebellion now, and you, and I think you said it too, Steph. Like he's got to he's got to meet up with Mon Mothma at one point in this show. But where's how? Yeah. You, you know, I I read this crazy predict or like not prediction, like afterthought. They were like, what if they made Clea's character, so the guy who the girl who works with Scar's yeah. guard, the Leia character in the Obi Wan series, and then like you connected it that way. I mean, she was so Leia? It wouldn't has been. Wouldn't that be cool? I was she like, was what like, if? She's too, she too, she too old to be Leia. Did you guys for a second think? I think Is that, that what you mean? That she would be Leia? I No, no, not Leia. Like, it would be her character. Like, that would be, like, the character she would be going after, I think. I, I, it was something like that. I think it was oh, on, like, oh, Den of I see Peak. what you mean. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like, saying that, say like that, it would change the storyline a little bit, but have, like, who still was, a character who she, was looking, who she was looking to go talk to. How old is yeah. Leia right about now? Um, but she's got to be what, like, well, it's just five years 14? before Rogue. Yeah, she's about 
13, 14. 13, 14. Okay, yeah. so she's not really into politics yet. No, she's already into politics at that point. But she's not a senator. Like she's, she's not, not. She's not at, at that high up. She's yet. not there. No, she's. She, I mean, so yeah, we're not going to see her at yeah. Mothma's parties remember, or anything. Oh yeah, you haven't seen Rebels. So in Rebels, you see her a few times, and she's like doing missions. Okay. Okay. So, All right. So, so that's. So, then I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, is there anything else? Yeah, I forget what it was, but it was something Did you like guys cool, like, like switching the characters. I loved seeing Vel on Coruscant, all done up. Yeah. Like so, they were they were on that planet. Like they weren't indigenous to that area they were just well she knew she living her like hermits for that period of time yes and she also knew that she didn't want to bring attention to herself and had to blend into the people yeah, it was as well and like that whole conversation that Bell has where she's like i did it and then she's like you got you got to kill this guy i want to say one thing Go ahead. well you know we always talk let's let's, let's be let's be balanced here <laughs> the top gun guy <laughs> there was one thing so far in all seven episodes that stood out to me as kind of awkward looking and it was cinta riding that speeder yeah. I know. Oh, was, I didn't. I thought that was cool. It, it, it was a nothing scene. It didn't. I didn't. It but wasn't. it was just the CG. The CGI of her on that. Uh, it, I was like, oh, that look. That but doesn't it, look as good as we've seen. Oh, may, this. Maybe, maybe. I'm just saying. CGI. Yeah. The, okay, the, the, but, the look of it was like, important because. It, oh it's, yes, I get that. Okay. okay but they, they even say no. It's as dangerous to receive messages as it sure, is. Sure, sure. But I was just like, oh. CGI. That looks like something out of but, one of the other but shows. Yet again, when the when the destro- when when the destroyer comes in. Oh, very cool. In, yeah, I just like, admit that might have been a pickup. Like, oh crap, we needed something a shot yeah, of her. Yeah. Can you take her to the soundstage twelve and just film around a green screen? We'll we'll put a speeder in. It yeah. didn't look like the stuff we've seen, like Lucian and him on the speeder leaving the quality. It was just like yeah, something. But again, it could have been a last minute pickup shot. Whatever it was, but whatever. E- either way, yeah. so I think that this ruined sh- the episode. This, for show, me. this show to me, <laughs> they, meant, they mentioned Palpatine twice. Yeah. They brought back the word of schedule. I love when they talk schedule. That's oh, an English, yeah. That's an English thing, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely is an English thing. Schedule. The schedule. Schedule. I love that. Um, but I love the fact that they, that they, I think that Mon Mothma is the main standout in this episode for sure. Um, the idea that Bix and Andor kind of rekindle talk. Kind can of like can I ask you guys something? Because yeah. you guys are into Rebels and whatnot. Yeah. The fact that, so we see Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith destroyed his face. Is that addressed ever in Star Wars like he is a victim of the Jedi the Jedi did this to me I'm wear my clothes well, he says it in he says it in in Revenge of the Sith remember he says he said they, they left me scarred they left right me but like I'm just saying now afterwards because he's if he's sitting there going about his day at parties with yeah. politics and stuff I now picture him ever since that moment always in the shadows look or like you come to my office and I'll I'll see a limited yeah. amount of people or I, I see dressing senators no I can't remember so I'm like what I, is his position right I, now I think senators and those those people know that he was attacked and he was kind of, but I think to the people, because I can't remember what it was in, but it was a few different things that when he addressed the nation, he looked like himself. So he had some kind of digital, they, 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 they yeah. So, okay. so people weren't scared and intimidated by him. I, I'm, I, I feel like that was, I don't know if that was a game or whatever it was. Um, and then, and then I know that in Rebels, when Ezra's talking to him at one point, he does the same thing. He kind of shades his face as he's talking to himself in, in a normal kind of Palpatine look. So I think it's kind of a back and forth. I think there are some people who see him. Because I'm going to say, him, if, if yeah. he's having meetings with the, the senators, like, no, we will do. I was like, yeah. you're a bad guy. This is awful. And I'm not going to say, believe a thing you say. But yeah, I'm but like, I think these are. But look, I mean, I think that people at this point. Like they know he's scarred, and they know that he's. I don't think anybody cares that he's a bad guy as long as they're prospering. But I think I, this whole I, it also lends in the fact that you hear this all the time in politics, where a, a real person is sick with cancer, or right. and they put makeup on him, and they right. they light yeah, him yeah, differently yeah, yeah. when he does press conferences. Right. I like. I think that's brilliant it if really they would is. do stuff like that. And they do this stuff though, even in this in the scene where where when Lucian says to to Mon Mothma, he's like, she's like because she's like, he's gonna Mon Mothma says to Lucian, he's gonna lose it now. He's gonna he's gonna wind up causing a lot of pain and, and this is like good that's yeah. what we want him to do i know it's like, and i'm like oh it's just like a lot of people are going to suffer like we kind of need that and it's like Ugh. damn because he's like he's playing the game he knows needs to be played in order to win and it might not be the game everybody wants to play or address lucian's one lucian but, might be my favorite character but lucian know. also is sitting from a place of of safety like this guy's for got now, a pretty for, damn good life for for yeah, well but mom Mothma has he, a great life too but mom Mothma's caring about the many he's just like he just wants to, he's the cause. The cause. Yeah. He's the cause. Yeah. Steph, you're going to say? 
Oh, yeah. I just love that part that they just made it very clear that this isn't what you're used to seeing when it comes to the rebellion, especially the beginning of the rebellion, that there's sacrifices that have to be made. And there's obviously going to be differences in how extreme people are. You could still all believe in one thing, but the way you go about it is going to be different. And the effects and the backlash, like we never really focused on that. Like there's probably so many times where the Jedi showed up and made it so much worse for the people living in the planet. But you don't really see that aftermath. And this, they're like, you really see, like, people are still suffering while there's being, uh, while they're getting, like, a fire lit under them at the same time. That's right. Um, and if you want to get a fire lit under you, you got to wake up in the morning, you got to have some good coffee. I'll tell you that. Uh, Steph, you're a coffee drinker, yeah? Big one. All right, well, you're going to be excited for this. Um, next time you come into the studio, Trade Coffee is now official sponsor of the, of the Sith Council and the big thing. And trade coffee, if you didn't know, it's like the best thing about like, Steph, do you love walking into like those little mom and pop coffee shops and like the smell that it gives off like right away when you walk in? Yes. So that's what this studio is going to smell like. And what's so great Woo! about it, I have like, a, I have like a, um, like a dark roast that I got from them. And what's great is if, you, if you're a big coffee drinker like myself and Steph, and you have to check out trade coffee. So what they do, if you didn't know about them, Steph, are you familiar with them yet? Or do you need me to tell no. you? No. Okay, let me tell you. So, I want to hear about it. Well, Trade Coffee makes it super easy to get the best coffee, and it's delivered fresh from the final local, local roasters around the country. So yeah, everybody loves going to coffee shops, and it's a great experience, but you can't do it like every day. So if you're looking for a delicious local coffee shop taste, and you can do it on a daily basis, it's so much easier to get it done with Trade Coffee. So if you've been getting your coffee from the grocery store and you're drinking the same kind of coffee every day, it's time to try something new and even better with Trade Coffee. It's so easy to get fresh roast just delivered to your doorstep from local roasters around the country and you do it with Trade. It's a coffee subscription service and it makes it so simple for you to discover new coffees and make your best cup of coffee at home every day. And there's no fancy equipment that's required. We have the, the pot, we grind it up, that's it. And Trade partners with the nation, nation's top rated independent roasters to send you coffee that they know you'll love fresh to your home and your preferred schedule. And with all that, and this is the part I know Steph's going to love, you get to support small local businesses and it's a win-win. So Yay! Exactly. So if you go, in. And I like this, the dark roast for me, I love. Um, and if whether you're just getting started or you're a coffee aficionado looking to discover something new, trade guarantees that you're going to love your first bag or listen to this, they're going to send you a new one for free. So I love what I have. Brett and I love the fact that it just smells like a damn uh, coffee shop in here, and it just gives you that that let's get the day started and do some good things. So upgrade your coffee today with Trade Coffee and let them take the guesswork out of finding your perfect cup. Now, right now, Trade is offering our listeners a total of, Steph's going to love this one, a total of $30 off of your subscription plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash big thing. One more time. That is drinktrade dot com slash big thing i see stuff writing it down for thirty dollars <laughs> off your subscription to the best coffees in the country drinktrade.com slash big thing now if you guys didn't know already as i've mentioned before whether you're getting a shirt of the top gun guy <laughs> the top gun guy <laughs> if you're getting the big thing logo the sith council logo any of those things if you joined patreon if you joined any of those things yes it absolutely helps to show tremendously of all the patrons i've been talking to lately helps to show tremendously helped out with the amazon list yes Liking, comment, yes. Sponsorship and things, if you're a big coffee drinker and you try trade coffee, you're helping yourself out and you help the show out because the more sponsors we get, the longer we stay on the air. And we are only getting sponsors that we really enjoy working with. And when Brett and I have been trying to get a freaking coffee sponsor in here forever and trade is the way to go. So please try it out and let me know. Get $30 off of the subscription. Why wouldn't you want to do that? And please let me know afterwards and I'd really want to know. And I'm sure... Steph, where do you get your coffee from normally? Uh, all of, like Starbucks or um, just the store. I don't actually making coffee at home. I love it so much. And I'm, I literally wrote this down because I have not found one at home that I really like. And I am very excited about this. Sign up because you're going to love it. And it's a, and wait until you come in here once you're feeling better and you're because your nose is a little stuffed up now. You, you want to get in here in time. You have like a you have a you can smell the roast. I need to smell it. I it. really like I'll put coffee beans and candles. That's how obsessed I am with that. Like real like mom paw shop. So yeah. I'm so yeah. there. Yeah. Well, that's what we were talking about. Brett and I were like, you know, we need to make this place smell like a mom and pop coffee shop. And that's yeah. what it's going to do. Um, all right. So 
I think that's everything with Andor today. I don't think there's anything else that we really need to get into. Next week, obviously, will be the eighth episode of this show. The show was running at a time when it was it was She Hulk, Lord of the Rings, House of the Dragon. That's right. It's going to be the only kid on the block in a second because House, will, of the Dra- House of the Dragon, She Hulk finished up, Lord of the Rings finished up, House of the Dragon finishes up this week. Oh wow! And then we've got this show and this show alone for, for so the whole month by itself. Until, of course, we also have um, Tales of the Jedi. Yeah, buddy. Now, Tales of the Jedi, I had a chance to see, and I can't give a review of it yet. The the review, I can't. There's an embargo until the. Um, until the actual episodes drop. Now, what I didn't know, and I don't know if you guys knew this, I wasn't sure they were going to do episodes like once a week. They're going to oh, yeah. they're going to drop them all at the same same all time. All six. So the long oh. yeah. So the longest episode is around fifteen or sixteen minutes. The shortest episode is around ten. Oh, so you, wow. almost an hour, give or take a little bit more than that. But yeah, yeah but yes, you can knock it all okay. down. Yeah, there's no reason to do that weekly then. Yeah, no. Um, and what I did is I I actually did a um a full. Like I, I did reactions to each episode. I mm-hmm. really sent them off to Nerd Chronic, and I'm gonna probably release them like every day. Yeah, for like six days. Um, but the show I was expecting because we all when we went to um, celebration the first time, we walked around and we had heard about it because I don't think any one of us was in that panel. I don't know what we were doing, but we missed that, and people were talking yeah. about it. They dropped the trailer at D23. It, well, they no, dropped the trailer, the trailer at celebration, celebration but, but, not, yeah. but not public. Right, because we yeah. were like, what happened? And it wasn't, yeah, it didn't get the traction. And we saw a little, people were talking about, oh, baby Ahsoka right. and this right. and that. And like, yeah, uh, yeah. So, it, but it seemed cool. It's like, why wouldn't you let us, so you know, why the, didn't you? Well, they, and they released it. The answer was because of D23. Okay. So, Steph, um, ask me anything that you want to ask me that I can answer about it. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I can, what I can avoid. But I know, because I know you're how excited you are for this series. Yeah, I'm really excited about the Dooku and uh, the Dooku backstory and obviously Ahsoka. But I, I know that you like, was it fulfilling? Like, because we see a side of Dooku that we haven't really seen at all. Did we get like enough that fills the cup? Way more fulfilling than I thought. Fills the wow. cup. So this show, as I said, when I saw the trailer. Yeah. I said this. This looks fun. This looks like a good. I mean, it's it's Filoni animation. It's it's gonna it's gonna be it'll be it'll be fun. This episode four of this show is one of the best animated episodes of Star Wars ever. Episode four of of Tales of the Jedi. It's high praise. It, it it is, and it and and what I loved about this show, the animation is some of the best animation as far as the actual animation itself. Um, the sound design of the show. This is this is stuff that I don't normally always pick up on, but I was it was so. It's beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful. The I liked the short episodes, I, and I said this in my reactions. I say here, I think that it would have been better. I would have rather had this than Bad Batch season two, to be honest with you, a full season of this. But mm. I liked it. Reminded me of Visions in the way that they did it, except it was canon, right? And Kevin Kiner, and I said this. I, I only had enough characters on Twitter to say, it, and people were like, <laughs> he, I, I, Kevin Kiner should be doing live action. Star Wars television. He does live action TV. People, people are like he does live action TV. Yeah, but he's never done live action Star Wars, and he should be because what he does is he infuses his original. The same thing he did in Rebels. Same thing he did You're in Clone about Wars. Composing, composing. Yeah. He he puts original tones, but he infuses it with the John Williams themes, and it's like it makes it it's brilliant. And so to answer your question, Steph, the Ahsoka stuff I was really looking forward to, and the Dooku stuff I was very curious about. The Ahsoka stuff is great. The Dooku stuff is next level. Okay, one more question. That's very exciting. What? Um, obviously, money and stuff is a different conversation. But if the show could have been in live action, do you think that would be what you'd want, or do you think animation served the purpose of what they could, were trying to do? I think you can get away with some more things that they'd be willing to try because it was animation. Because I don't know if Disney would let them do this. In live action is all I will say. I'll be a little bit more uh, descriptive in the review once, once we talk about it. But I would highly recommend that when, I mean, obviously when it comes out, you guys should, you're not going to want to not watch this. When does it come out? Uh, the end of the month. Okay. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really good. It's really, really good. And I, I, was, I was shocked how much I loved it. I mean, I, I loved it. And does it make you, uh, does it add, like, obvious, I don't know if you can answer this, but, like, we're getting the Ahsoka show and we're getting a bunch of different shows coming up. Does it add, like, more understanding or will it make those shows better, do you think? Well, 
I mean, all I'll say is that you, it, it definitely – it, it it definitely ties in. It, it's not just a standalone like these little side adventures. It, it furthers characterizations okay. in in, in, cool. in, all, in all aspects. Is all awesome. great. But um, I'm in. But once again, everybody, if you have a chance, once it comes out, uh, check out Tales of the Jedi. I don't I, like I said. I can just that's just initial kind of reaction thoughts. Um, I I can't really give a full detailed review on it yet because it's the embargo. But I am so psyched for you guys to check it out. And here's the. Um, now, there's a couple things on Star Wars Newsnet that we'll, we'll bring up real quick, and then we'll call it a day. Um, all right. Sabine actor Natasha Lou Bordizzo finished filming for Ahsoka. Now, Sabine is going to have... Now, why, where did that go? What, what happened here? Oh, you have a problem first. navigating the news again? Oh, oh, here we go again. No, look. I'm clicking on it, and nothing's coming up. Well, you... It's not secure, apparently. Oh, okay. It's perfect. All right. All right, let's see. Try it again. Try again. Let's see if it works. But, uh, there it goes, right? We'll find out. So we're going to bring up this, and uh, let's see. But, I mean, oh God, I just see this shot from Andor down here. Yeah, the eye. It was so good, dude. The show's so good. This has nothing to do with Star Wars, but did you guys both see the Creed trailer? Creed 3 trailer? Uh, yeah. Let's go for it. I, I, I got thoughts. Um, it's incredible. I don't know. I'm torn on it because it, Stallone doesn't have his, it doesn't have Stallone's blessing. So that, well, that to me, is, is a is a huge I red know. flag i understand that huge red I flag that, but that's a i mean again we'll talk about it at a different time okay um all right sabine actor natasha uh liz bordello thank you leo no it's not liz you're wrong about that leo leo my eyes liz suck Bordello, i'm too. sorry five months after filming beginning in manhattan beach studios the ahsoka series is getting ready it's from our buddy miguel fernandez by the way is getting ready to call a wrap as usual, with some of these productions, the main actors are posting on social. They are done with the series. In this case, it's Natasha Lou Bordizo, who plays the live-action incarnation of Sabine Wren in the new series. Tia Sakar voiced the character in the animated series Star Wars Rebels. The actress recently posted on an Instagram image of Sabine Wren, a piece of artwork that Dave Filoni drew for her birthday, a screenshot of a short paragraph with all the caption of, What a year, this journey, Star Wars, Sabine Wren. Check it out below. Uh, didn't show up for some reason on the computer. Anyway. In early September, lead actress Rosario Dawson indicated that the series had a couple of months left of shooting. That deadline, which will expire around the end of October or beginning of November, seems to be quite accurate. As the week progresses, we might even get an update from Rosario Dawson herself, saying the filming is done. Dawson has played the character in episodes of The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. We still haven't seen Leo Bedurzo as Sabine Wren, though that could potentially happen during Season 3 of The Mandalorian. I think she might show up. I think that's true which is currently set to debut in February 2023. No release date has been set for Ahsoka, though a summer 2023 window is to be expected. We will potentially get more details during Star Wars Celebration in London or April of next year. I think we'll get an announcement of when it comes out before before then. I don't know. They Remember, we're always like, when do you think it's coming out? We're oh, Anytime we're trying to figure out these release dates of these shows, that we, we're always going up to the very end. Always. I know, but that's April. That's Look April. at you. you oh, I think you always try and... You're like Shannon. You always want to challenge me. I'm something. not, but this you're is challenging a, this, me constantly. Okay, then I'll, let's let Steph be the judge because Steph, you you're usually in between these fights, right? So go for it, Steph. All right, Steph. I'm a, so Mike will make his. Mike just made his cause. And Mike said that he thinks that they're going to wait. You don't think they're going to? You think that it's possible that they announced a release date of Ahsoka at Celebration? Yeah, okay, I think so. Think. Okay, yeah. so my argument against that is that this is April. I think that the release date of the show, because if you look at Secret Wars, is probably going to come out around, or Secret Invasion, excuse me, from Marvel, is probably going to come out anywhere in like between the March. See, and we don't even have a date for that yet. I know that's my thing. Between March, and, March and April is what they said. They said they said spring. So okay. I'm, so I say March, April, because Mandalorian will be will be clearing Done. up around that time. Yeah. So if you do the math, around August, September is probably when Ahsoka is going to air. If you were to guess between that time, August to September, August or September. So you think around the, the and or time frame. around that time. Okay. So it, which would make sense considering the way that they're doing it now. Right. So when did we get Andor announced of its actual release date? Uh, not, not celebration, not, not two months before the show came out celebration. No, not this celebration. I think you're that's already, when we no, found out. Already, no, you already knew it was coming out. In, in anyway, look, point is this, even if it was celebration, which was April, May, yeah. June, July, August, that's four, four months. months. Yeah. Right. So then if you have if you have April, so May, June, July, but I don't think it was. Look at you. You were like, I know, that, that I, could work. No, I, I'm not no, going to agree with it. No, but I don't think it was. Okay. So my, my thing is this stuff. I think that you're going to have a release date for Ahsoka sooner than April. 
because I don't think that's enough time to, to, to prep it. I think Disney would want to let people know. What do you think? Yeah, I could see, I really could see both either happening. I think it like kind of depends where they are with post-production. I think if they feel like they're in a good place and they'll do it earlier. And that's good news. If she just wrapped, then I feel like it could be earlier and get people excited because they have a lot of other things they could be announcing at the next celebration. It's not, I think they would like maybe drop like an extended trailer at celebration. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting either way. Um, and let's see if there's anything. And then Thrawn, what I do think is going to happen, I think they're going to announce probably the cast and stuff a little bit more. Yes. Because I think, yeah. Because I think, yeah, yeah, I I think that'll that. happen sure, first. Sure. I think we're going to get a trailer for Ahsoka probably in between like the December, January area. So you I think? think I th- and, and with that, I think when they, when they drop the trailer, I think that's when we drop the... Uh, because what we the first trailer we saw for Andor, maybe you're right. You know, with the first trailer, I'll say they'll drop. Wait, you might be right though. With of the trailer. course, I'm right. The trailer wasn't the trailer for Andor. The first trailer we ever saw for Andor that was at Celebration, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because the the yeah. gong, 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 right. the big thing and the, the, the uh, a reckoning. But I, but I re- that's what that's right. it is. Because that was the big like, oh man. Because you were like, until I saw footage, I wasn't into the show. Now after this trailer, I'm no, all it's in. on board. So, but I do, but I, but I think that they already had the date for it. But either way, either way. Um, I don't think I don't we're getting, getting a trailer. You might not. Get, you're right, you might be right. We might not get a trailer for Ahsoka. Until See, now I, that I do say, I think we'd get a trailer before then at the end of Mando three, maybe, and it'll say coming summer twenty twenty three. Yeah, celebration will de- celebration will because think all right, think about now what we've done. Celebration and D twenty three. They really didn't go into like celebration was was Obi Wan. That was Obi Wan's right. show. Right. This is gonna be Ahsoka's. Uh, so this will be a Soka show. Right. They will go full, yeah. and everything else will be like, wow, they didn't give us anything on any, uh, anything. And then Acolyte will there finally was, get some There love. was an Acolyte cast said hello, and uh, the skeleton crew said hello. But it was all about Ahsoka. It was Ahsoka. all Ahsoka. I think Celebration will be Ahsoka, I think 100%. you're right. I think Ahsoka's going to have that heavy push. That one I, I dug. Yeah. See, look, I agree with you. There we go. Um, I think that. Ahsoka's the world's gonna, happier and th- place for And us. I think Acolyte will absolutely have a presence. Um, you hope. You're going to be upset if it's not. If it doesn't have a presence <laughs> in a show that's supposed to come out. I we don't know when it's coming out, though. Yeah, you're right. It um, will. <laughs> it will. So skeleton, yeah, the cast Skeleton keeps crew will have more because skeleton, skeleton crew is crew. supposed to come out. They'll be done year. by then. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. All right. Well, anyway, listen. It was a show here today. It was. I appreciate you guys checking us out. Thank you. Thank you for our Andor spoiler review. Thank you very much. Thank you for Steph for getting out of her sick bed oh, to kiddo, join us here you. today. Um, make sure, once again, guys, if you haven't had a chance, get yourself some of that merch. It's on there right now, and if you don't like the Sith Council one, then get this one. <laughs> the Top Gun guy? <laughs> the Top Gun guy? Yeah, that one is on right now. You can get that. You can get show some class. All those and more on the store at the moment, but the Sith Council logo is there. Support the show, support us. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate you. We will see you on the flip side, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you comment, do everything that you have to do. Get the show helping in the algorithm. We appreciate you, and we'll see you next time on Sith Council. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus, makes you stronger. 